My name's Eddie. We're at the Arkow Molly Dairy Farm in Sheffield here. Uh, behind me are all our dairy cows. So they've been through the milky parlour this morning. They've all just had their breakfast. And uh, any time now, we're about to let them go and they'll spend the rest of the day grazing outside in the, uh, in the lovely sunshine. We have about 180 acres. An acre is about the size of a football pitch. So that's how much room the cows have got to, uh, to graze about in during the day. Um, we grow corn, the stalks of the corn uh, become the straw, which is the cow's bedding. And then we roll the corn, which is then part of the diet and which will form part of the cow's breakfast today. On our farm, we have a milking parlor where the cows go through to be milked. We have a dairy processing site where we're able to pasteurize that milk uh, put it into bottles. Also on the farm, we use the farm's milk and the cream to make ice cream as well. And then we deliver that milk and ice cream all over Sheffield in our own vans. So we do every single job on our farm from the moment the calf's born, to caring for the cows, to feeding the cows, making the cows beds, and then delivering all the products that we get as dairy products across Sheffield. The jobs on a dairy farm would be the job that my dad does where he looks after the cows, decides to make sure we've got enough cows, what breed of cows we're having that will be suited for our fields. You have uh, jobs where the guys drive the tractors, so it's rolling to flatten the fields, chain arrowing to pull the grass to let air into the grass. You have jobs making the ice cream, working in the dairy, putting the milk into bottles, um, and then jobs just as, as for moving cows around. So at the moment now, the cows behind me, they've had their breakfast, they're all going out to spend the rest of the day in the field. On a typical dairy farm, you will have a, a vet uh, comes to check the cows, make sure the cows are all right. You have to imagine that rather than if you're not well, you go to the doctors, it's far easier to get the vet to come to the cows than to try and take the cows to the vet because they're quite large animals. On our farm, we produce dairy products. So your obvious dairy products would be milk, cream, butter, ice cream, but dairy products go into making an awful lot more things. For instance, uh, in bread, you put milk in bread. If you're making chocolate brownies, they have buttering, croissants have buttering. So it's a real key ingredient for lots and lots of foods that you'll buy. Yesterday, I took a van load of milk down to Sheffield to a lady that makes cheese with our milk and we're able to sell it on our farm in the shop. So it's really nice that people can see the milk's come from our cows and then it's made these beautiful little cheeses. On a dairy farm is a great example of a food chain. We've obviously got the fields behind us, seeing the cows going out, so they're now grazing in the fields. When we've had lots of rain and lots of sunshine, the grass really thrives and grows as it will your, your lawn at home. The real great thing on a dairy farm is that whenever the grass is growing, it fixes loads of carbon in the soil. So it's really good for the environment. The cows then graze that grass to keep the soil and the grass thriving. So they consume the grass, and then from that consuming the grass, they then produce the milk. Um, we're able to then bottle the milk in our bottling plant, uh, and then we can deliver it out for people to consume on the breakfast. So the cows will consume the grass in the field behind me and then they produce milk but they also produce slurry. We have a large tank and we collect all the slurry and then when we've got the crop in uh, we'll then spread the slurry on the field to replenish the nutrients to then get the next crop growing ready for harvesting. So the cows behind are eating the, the grass um, and at this time of year they're eating the grass as fast as it's growing. At uh, different times of the year, the grass grows differently. So in the summer, when we've got lovely sunshine, plenty of rain, the grass grows really well. In the winter, when it's not quite as warm, uh, the grass doesn't grow. Below 10 degrees, it hardly grows at all. So then we have to have food for the cows in the winter. So what we do on our farm is we have some fields that the cows won't graze during the summer. We let the grass in those fields grow really, really long, and then we harvest that grass and that is called silage. 
we then put that grass into a building and we save that for the cow's winter feed. The cows will get that winter feed when it's not suitable for them to go outside. So if it's a really, really wet, um, and then we will let the cows out into the fields, the cows would make all the fields into mud. So they will get the winter feed and they can stay indoors then. Or if it's in fact when it's snowing, if we sent the cows out onto a field that was covered in snow, they wouldn't be able to find the grass. So again, they can be inside eating the winter feed. We also produce hay, which is you cut the grass again when it's nice and long in the summer, but instead of harvesting it within a day or two, you leave it out on the fields in the baking hot sunshine and you keep fluffing it up and turning it over until most of the moisture has gone from the grass and then that becomes your hay. We bale that up into small bales and then we're able to feed that as a supplementary winter feed throughout the winter months when the cows can't be in the fields. So our supply chain is incredibly short. We get the orders in at five o'clock at night, so people tell us what milk they would like for their coffee shops, for their news agents to sell the milk. We then milk the cows, we bottle the milk through the night, we load the vans first thing in the morning, and then by about lunchtime, we've delivered the milk to those shops. So within a few hours of the cows grazing in the field, we've got that milk through the night delivered. It's quite dramatically different to the supply chain that the majority of the supermarkets use. A dairy farmer would milk his cows, he would put the milk in the same large storage tank, and then he would wait, usually for up to two days, for the milk tanker to come and collect his milk. The milk tanker would then collect the milk from his farm, from the neighboring farm, from the neighboring farm, until the milk tanker was full of milk. It would then take that milk tanker to a large processing plant, where the milk's emptied into huge silos and the milk's mixed together from farms from all over. At that point, they will then bottle that milk. The milk then is taken to a supermarket distribution center. At the distribution center, it is loaded onto Arctic wagons and then driven to the local supermarkets in your area. Now you can imagine there's quite a difference in the freshness of the milk compared to our really short quick supply chain and this quite long complicated supply chain. And the longer supply chain obviously has an effect on the environment too. Not only the quality of the milk but also all the transportation of the diesel vehicles and the air quality associated with that. Um, so it's quite two quite different supply chains. We're just outside our processing dairy. So if you see behind me, the uh, black shiny roof is actually all solar panels. They produce 15 kilowatts of electricity to help provide all the power for our dairy. Provides all the power for keeping the milk cold. It's also used to heat the hot water for when we're washing the, uh, the milk bottles. So the milk comes in two different containers, glass milk bottles and poly milk bottles. Um, the glass milk bottles obviously get delivered when people have emptied them. We collect them in when we deliver the next lot of milk and then we can wash them in our dairy behind. The poly milk bottles are made in Sheffield using polymer beads that are then blown into a bottle shape and then when you've emptied those bottles they then go in the recycling. So it's quite an, an interesting question to look at the differences between buying milk in glass milk bottles that can be reused and buying milk in poly milk bottles. There's obviously different environmental impacts on each. For instance, the glass milk bottles have to be washed, whereas the poly milk bottles don't. And also the glass bottles weigh quite a lot heavier because glass is heavier than plastic. But the plastic is far easier to make and mold at lower temperatures than trying to melt glass. So it's a really interesting thing to look at.